Praise the Lord and Shalom everyone. Welcome to our uh, last mentoring hour for this semester. Uh, thank you all for uh, joining the call this morning. Uh, we'll begin with a word of prayer. So can I ask one of our students to please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Can I ask Asapu, Asapu Raj to lead us in prayer, please? Or any of our students, anyone can lead us in prayer, please. Good morning, everyone. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this hour of mentoring, Father. We pray that as you minister to us through your word, Lord, that we'll be able to apply whatever we're learning today in our daily lives and retain whatever we're learning, Father. We also pray for a blessing upon our entire faculty and all those participating in this uh, hour of mentoring, Father. We ask all of this in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sanjay. Uh, welcome again, everyone, uh, to our weekly mentoring hour. Um, uh, so we are approaching the end of uh, yet another semester. And uh, I don't know how many of you are uh, feeling overwhelmed with uh, having to attend all the classes, uh, complete the assessments uh, and the assignments. Uh, additionally, with, you know, uh, meeting the demands at your workplace, your personal life, and you're just feeling very overwhelmed. And if you're feeling like a burnt toast this morning, don't worry. Uh, we have Jean George with us uh, to add the jam and the butter, which will help us to relish our toast. Uh, over to uh, Jean George, who would uh, uh, help us with this topic, uh, burnt out. So let's welcome her with our thumbs up and a hand clap, please, everyone. We see that. Thank you. Over to Jean George. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Selena. That was indeed a, a, a nice <laughs> welcome and a, uh, and a needed uh, introduction. Uh, thank you so much. Um, so today we're going to be uh, focusing and looking at uh, uh, something that that uh, that's not really spoken about loud, uh, but I'm sure each one of us have experienced it in some area of our lives at some point. And that's what uh, we're going to be looking at is burnout. Um, my focus today on our uh, uh, learning today is basically burnout in ministry. Um, however, I've picked up maybe some uh, details or some models that is generally known and understood in mental health. Uh, and I've, I've kind of uh, tried to see if we can uh, get some gleaning, some learnings out of that, even as all of us are in, are in ministry. Um, so burnout actually is something that has made its uh, uh, way into psychiatric clinics, has made its way into uh, you know, books and journals of uh, psychiatry. And uh, it's something that also the World Health Organization has recognized as a syndrome. And this, uh, we'll, we'll just probably focus on what it is first. We will go into some statistics uh, on, you know, how, what do pastors uh, or what do ministers feel? And why is it that they burn out or why is it that they may quit the ministry? We will look into some causes and then we will quickly look into what we can do. Um, so as I was saying, uh, it's, a, it's a syndrome that, uh, and it's generally results from uh, unmanaged stress in the place of work, whether it be at home, whether it be uh, in an office setting, whether it be into, in ministry. So it is basically characterized by three main um, manifestations. Uh, it's exhaustion or tiredness, it's cynicism or negativity, uh, and it is reduced efficacy, um, which all play one to, to another. So this is described as generally the result of over, overwhelming demands or responsibilities that may be placed on us by ourselves or by others that we sometimes just cannot bear. So if we were to just look at these three uh, characteristics, exhaustion generally occurs when there is a lack of physical, emotional, mental, or relational resource to really cope with the task that has been given to us. 
the the next part of it, the characteristic of cynicism or negativity, comes when emotions take over, resulting in an increased sense of negativity either towards work or towards the people who are related to that work. And um, the last one, reduced efficacy, it is a diminished sense of effectiveness and uh, and a sense of that you aren't accomplishing anything. So it's a lack of accomplishment with a sense of ineffectiveness. So it is a combination of these three components that generally can be identified as burnout and causes people to shut down physically, mentally, emotionally, relationally, and even spiritually. So if you if if we look at um, what are some of the symptoms and and i and i don't have a slide on this but i just quickly what would just like to mention there are certain physical symptoms that someone may feel when they burn out that's that exhaustion there is uh, uh, difficult sleep habits there could be health problems there can be uh, um, frequent somatic symptoms like headache colds or even mental health concerns like anxiety or a, a huge feeling of sadness. There can be an emotional burnout where there is a, a sense of negativity, there is irritability, there could be anger, there could be feelings of hopelessness, feelings like you're being trapped, that uh, you, know, you should just isolate yourself from, from others. Or there are mental burnout symptoms where you're dreading work, there's a lack of interest or motivation, there is no sense of accomplishment, there is procrastination, you just feel lazy, don't feel like doing anything, and there's incapable of uh, uh, taking on new challenges. The spiritual part of burnout would be just a sense of disillusionment about what we what one is called to do and, and the way that they would probably relate to God. So this basically is what we are what we would term as burnout. Now, when we look at, uh, as, I, as I said, the specific focus for today is on burnout uh, in ministry. And I just wanted to bring about a statistics from uh, uh, the Barna Group, which is a Christian research organization that gives data and insights on uh, trends affecting faith and culture. And this is basically compiled in, in America. But some of the factors, and I think we can just take some uh, some learnings from it. So some of the factors that are behind the burnout is seen. And if you look at the top two uh, reasons, the first one is the immense stress of the job in ministry of what is uh, the, the, the huge amount of load that is on a minister. Or the second one is just that sense of feeling lonely and isolated. You see that these are some probably some of the top two reasons. And then there are a whole list that's that's given there. Um, when you look into the Bible, we see that burnout actually isn't new. There are some examples that are even seen in the Bible. Uh, we, we know about Elijah. Uh, in uh, uh, First Kings, it talks about how after a great victory over the prophets of Baal at Mount Carmel, Elijah faces this intense fear and exhaustion that he flees into the wilderness and asks God to take his life. You know, he's so overwhelmed by the challenges he faced. And despite what all has happened, he experiences that emotional, physical exhaustion, which we can liken to as burnout. We would see in Exodus, we see Moses, although he didn't come to the brink of it, but uh, uh, the weight of his leadership, the burden of actually judging those disputes among the Israelites. As a result, his father-in-law Jethro advises him to delegate those responsibilities to some leaders, recognizing that uh, you know Moses would probably become extremely overwhelmed by by the the, the demands uh, that uh, demands that, uh, that take upon his role. So we see that that is it, it has been common even in in the Bible, and we've read about that. Um, what I what I'm what I'd like to basically look at is to identify six areas where we could experience uh, imbalances that lead to burnout. Now, this is taken from a model. It's called the work-life model by, uh, by a psychologist. And I've taken that in and, and kind of seen how we can pick up from that understanding this. So there are six areas that it talks about, and I'll take each point briefly. So the first one we can look at is workload. And workload <clears throat> can present itself in many ways. So let's look at some examples. Some examples could be limited time maybe money or staff to support uh, the ministry work effectively, resulting in probably added hours and workload in the minister or in the pastor. 
or it could be pastors really expecting too much from themselves and others uh, and taking on a much heavier uh, workload that could be unrealistic for their personal abilities and even the resources that may be available. Or workload could even look like a, a, a self-worth or an identity that is derived from the ministry work or from what happens in the ministry. So when and I, when the minister's identity becomes focused on the on their office as a pastor or as a minister rather than the person of Christ, they they could uh, it it takes uh, they look at things very very um, wrong and and they find it difficult to satisfy what they may be looking for. So the desire sometimes is to even please others, um, and that quickly takes over and becomes extremely consuming. The second point that we can look at is control. Now, control can come from a loss of autonomy or uh, the inability to work or make decisions that is made um, in the ministry. So, for example, maybe not having a voice in the decision making process of the ministry if you're part as a, of a team or you feel a sense of being manipulated by the decision makers to do something that you feel that may not be a part of your role or part of your calling or the success of the ministry that is measured basically on productivity or on workload. The success um, is equivalent to how much of work that you are doing or how many programs that you may be doing. Or it could be changes in the role without actual adequate preparation uh, that may cause a certain conflict about the role that one may need to get into. The third factor that we look at is a reward. Reward here, um, when you look at it, is if, if there is a lack of reward, that it can result, uh, a lack of reward generally results when work is not valued, maybe due to insufficient recognition or maybe negative <clears throat> reinforcement. So the outcome of efforts in probably discipleship or evangelism uh, and ministry may be slow to materialize. You know, it may take some time to materialize and sometimes it may not be evident as, um, as soon as, uh, as, as the work is done. So thus, there can be feeling among ministers that the work is never finished and that it is difficult to quantify success or quantify work per, per se, which generally leads to feelings of inefficacy. Uh, often, it's a desire to see fruit and be rewarded for ministry efforts that sometimes can supersede the, desi uh, the, the desire for church advancement also. The next one we can look at is community. Now, community refers to a place where people can experience others uh, with a shared sense of value. So if, if, for example, if ministers do not have a supportive team to rely on, they overextend themselves and attempt to single-handedly handle all the aspects of the ministry, it can cause a burnout. Even isolation can occur when pastors feel isolated or unsupported, even within their larger church community. They may actually struggle to cope with the pressures of the ministry on their own. So sometimes without clear boundaries or accountability structures in place, pastors could find it difficult to even prioritize their own well-being and may feel pressured to constantly be available for the work of the ministry. The fifth one is fairness. Fairness, just like in every other workplace, is a fair and equitable work environment that promotes someone's well-being. So if the workload distribution is unfair, with pastors bearing the brunt of responsibilities while others contribute maybe minimally, pastors could become overwhelmed and burn out from the excessive workload. Or it can be underappreciation or feeling undervalued. This can lead to a minister feeling quite disillusioned. Or conflicts or grievances that that may happen within either the team or within the church that is not handled justly or equitably can make um, uh, pastors or ministers feel uh, unheard or unsupported of. The last one is values. Values um, in any workplace and so much more in, in, in ministry is essential for people to experience a deep relationship with, with the work. So values generally refer to the mismatch of one's personal values to that of the organization's values or to that of the ministry's values. So value, value mismatch or conflict can arise when there is a disconnect between the value of the pastor or the minister and the organization or the church, or there's a discord between their worldview regarding work and the reality of daily life in the ministry context. Now, this 
often can cause demotivation, inefficacy, cynicism. Like, for example, let's say if a church prioritizes productivity and ministry output over the well-being of the pastors, or if a minister may feel pressured to prioritize ministry responsibilities at the expense of their personal time and family relationships, it, it's something that can, that can actually lead to what we call as, again, burnout. So coming to the last part of it, and, and, and maybe the most needed for us at this point, is how do we deal with burnout? And I've, and I've just enumerated a couple more of points. It's not completely exhaustive, but you know, just picked up some of the things. So first and foremost is for a minister's identity not to come from either the growing numbers or the ministry programs, or even the outcome of these programs, or, or how good a sermon is, or how effective um, a program has been, it is to be able to look to Christ, to seek validation and uh, in, in Christ, to seek their identity in Christ. So our identity is derived from Christ alone. Because of who we are in him, through our faith, we receive every benefit and blessing that comes to us even as part of our work or as part of our ministry. So as a minister who, uh, who, who could be faced with fears or failures or struggles, challenges, disappointments, we must trust in Christ. Hebrews 4.15 says uh, that he sympathizes with, with our weakness. We also see a, a lot of references. Um, when we look at John, it talks about being in the vine, you know, abiding in the vine so that we draw from him. Hebrews talks about persevering, you know, in, in, in the faith. So no matter what the challenges is to continue persevere in the faith when we keep our focus on Christ uh, it, uh, himself. The next is to be able to seek God, even through these challenges. Um, uh, a minister <clears throat> must cultivate their own personal uh, devotional life. And this is should not be confused to preparing for a sermon, or it should not be confused with uh, uh, wrestling with, with, with doctrines or learning about scripture. It's to cultivate your daily devotional life when you open God's word just for one reason, and that is to just seek him to to come to him so a minister who regularly delights in the lord will joyfully persevere in ministry um, god is more interested in our relationship with him than he is in our work and uh, one of the verses that's that's beautifully brought about is in hosea 6 6 that says for i desire steadfast love and not sacrifice the knowledge of god rather than burnt offering so it is to build that relationship with him to be able to find our identity, to find our cultivating our personal relationship with God. The next is to be able to know our responsibility. So it is important to uh, take some time to really align your work with the vision God has put in your heart or for the ministry or for the, ch or for the church. So take time to understand your role, your contribution, and what is expected of you. So, and if you are under a leadership, take time to have regular meetings to check in about what 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 it is that is uh, asked of you and what what is it that have been your personal value so bringing that together is important whether you're working on your own or whether you're part of a uh, leadership the next one is as you know we just read about uh, in the life of moses to delegate delegate particularly activities that are not your strengths or you uh, or you know have leaders with the relevant skill that who can do the task and share that responsibilities. So rotate the responsibility of these of tasks and look for opportunities also to train other leaders or to train emerging ministers so that uh, the, the, the load can, can be off shouldered to, to somebody else. Most important also here, which, which is something I think a lot of ministers and pastors overlook is physical self-care. And stress has a physical, and a chemical existence in our body. So when we identify uh, feeling feeling stress, remember it is the product of certain hormones being re released into our bloodstream from our adrenal glands. And one way to mitigate this is to metabolize the stress hormones is through physical care, physical care, be it exercise, be it diet, be it sleep. 
or be it be it rest and that the, this uh, has to be um, a part of something that we as ministers do on a regular basis next is emotional care which is in a way to resolve unattended emotions or um, when there are conflicts that are un unresolved or wounds that you may be carrying from life experiences or because you've been burnt at some interactions uh, remember they don't just go away if you ignore them you must be we need to continue um, uh, to to uh, bring it before God you know and that that self-care emotional self-care is actually taking the time to really find healing and resolution of the things um, that you don't want to be carrying around remember it just doesn't go away it will be at the back of your mind if you don't deal with it and and bring some of that to rest or or bring it before God and ask for his help through that the next is to really have a, a good um, a referral base um, and, and what I mean by this is you know have a good network so that the burden of pastoral care can actually be shared particularly if you are a small independent church with maybe limited resources utilize other resources know your uh, local church family and the ministers in your local area even if they are from other denominations uh, you know once you vetted them out once you know what their ministry their faith statements are like get that referral base um, and and get support from uh, from from others within the ministry uh, also to link with other pastors um, just as part of a group uh, you know taking opportunities to connect with other leaders so that um, you know you, you're sharing and you come together to really encourage and build one another up and lastly if none of this helps or if uh, or, you know if you would if you would really require that kind of support go in and seek counseling from maybe another pastor or a, or a Christian counselor who's help who would help you to navigate some of this uh, some of these things that you may be going through lastly just to bring about um, uh, an encouragement from the word and this is something that uh, I think each of us have at some point really gone back to is what we read in Matthew um, uh, you know God wants to really um, continue using each of our giftings to accomplish his purposes for our life uh, and this is across our entire life and he has called us to enjoy his rest and his rest is something that will rejuvenate us to start afresh so remember each of us have been called and we have value to offer because of who we are in Christ so don't allow the enemy to convince you otherwise or prematurely knock you uh, out of out of the of, of the rates that you are called for be aware of uh, what uh, what the schemes of the enemy is be aware of what these symptoms of burnout is develop those these disciplines and be empowered to a lifetime of effective kingdom ministry i right, thank you so much uh, back to you pastor Selina. uh thank you so much uh, jean george for uh, choosing a very relevant uh, topic and addressing such a relevant topic and, and walking us through a few areas of burnout very briefly. Uh, thank you so much. We'll open the time now for uh, any of you who have any questions, doubts, or uh, uh, you you have any case scenarios that you'd like to present to Jean and you'd like your uh, help and advice, uh, you can post it on the chat section or you can raise your hands and we will uh, ask you and you can unmute your mics and ask your questions. Uh, over to Kofi. Uh, thank you, Pastor. Please, I would like to find out when Jesus was on the cross, at a point he said, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? Can we describe that situation as burnout? Uh, thanks for that question. I would really ask the other pastors to help me with this. Um, uh, that, in, that is definitely not burnout. Um, it, it is as we do understand from scripture that what Jesus did on the cross and what what um, at the time that he went on the cross taking away our sins that was the time that there was separation uh, for that point of time while he was doing that and that's that's the point of which that Jesus says that and not because <clears throat> he was exhausted or he was he had it enough he he definitely knew what his purpose and his calling was and he went to the cross willingly he went to the point um, of death of crucifixion knowing uh, 
what he would receive as a result of that obedience to Christ. So um, I don't see that. I don't see that as burnout uh, at all. I would open this up to the other pastors. I'm sure they would probably have a, a much more succinct uh, uh, explanation for that as well. Uh, thank you, Jean. Uh, does like any of our other faculty like to help Kofi? Uh, just like to share a few things, Kofi, in the meantime, while other pastors uh, would like to share as well. Uh, you know, when when Jesus was saying this on the cross, he was uh, basically, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, he was just going through that deep agony and sense of abandonment uh, because of the weight of the sins of humanity that was placed on him. So, you know, uh, Jesus in his humanity, he was human when, you know, uh, he walked on this earth, he was fully human. Uh, he basically experienced the depth of human suffering and also the feeling of abandonment. Um, and he felt forsaken and abandoned by his um, father. Uh, also that, you know, uh, it was just a cry as a momentary separation from the Father because he bore the weight of uh, the sins of the entire humanity. And um, so it is basically, uh, you know, reflecting uh, Jesus' uh, spiritual anguish of being separated from the Father, even though it was uh, uh, just very uh, temporary. And it was... Um, a spiritual separation and it was not in any sense uh, you know uh, a, 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 a burnout or a, uh, that he was experiencing because we know that um, uh, uh, in other instances when we read in the gospels uh, even when jesus was very tired he was sleeping uh, in the boat and there was a storm uh, he didn't feel the fear and the anguish and, you know, of uh, being drowned or the storm overtaking them. Uh, he was uh, entirely in, uh, you know, perfect peace uh, because he was so close and intimate with the Father. So this is basically just, uh, you know, going through that anguish of um, taking on the sins of the entire uh, uh, humankind and also, sorry, and also, uh, you know, that spiritual uh, uh, momentary separation from the Father. Uh, any other faculty would like to add? Please feel free to share. Or did that help, Kofi? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Kofi. Uh, this, uh, any other faculty would like to share or we'll move on to Sam's uh, question? Okay. Uh, Sam says, with so many things to get done, sometimes it feels impossible to take a break. How does one take a break from work knowing that doing so many uh, things, uh, doing so many may put things at halt, backlogs, client team members, escalations, anxieties, etc. Over to you, Jean. Okay. Uh, Sam, uh, you know, but one of the, I think in any kind of work that we do, one of the important skills that all of us need to understand and learn is the way that we manage our time. And I know some, sometimes it's, it's really difficult, especially when there are a whole lot of things that are piled on to us. Time management is also involves planning to be able to um, um, chart your day, chart your week, probably chart um, you know a month at least to understand broadly what are some of the things that is there on your plate and how much you can take. Because without planning or without being able to manage that, we may take on more responsibilities that we may not be able to handle. So if there is a plate full, we're looking at how we are going to portion that plate in such a way that you can finish it by whatever time deadline that you, that you have. So time management is one of the biggest important things. Secondly, is actually being able to plan ahead what is required. The third is the ability to, uh, or the courage to say no to something that you that you know is beyond 
beyond your ability to take so. Um, and I think that's something uh, maybe as ministers to, uh, to and, and I don't mean by just saying no, um, you know, very flippantly for everything that comes to you saying no, but really uh, engaging with and having a good chart about what all you have so that you know you, you need to minimize whatever uh, extra work that comes. The next one is prioritizing, being able to put into priority things that are uh, utmo of utmost importance and put put aside that which isn't which isn't necessary. So these these are three four things, and these these are very common and they're quite quite simple in the way that it sounds, but actually quite difficult in it to do. But that's exactly why I brought about time management first and foremost, to, to really have a good look at your day and see where are your time wastages. Because if, you know, if we, we actually look at it, there are many things that we do that is actually a time waste, which we can take off maybe a break or which we can uh, add in an, an extra, uh, extra task. Or it may be some things that you are doing that really doesn't need your expertise or doesn't need you to, uh, uh, you know, to spend so much of, of, of time in, and it can be easily handled, ha handed over to, to somebody else. So these are probably some of the ways that we, we can organize ourselves to ensure that we get things done in the best way possible. Thank you, uh, Jean. i uh, just like to share uh, Sam from Pastor Ashish's life. He plans the entire year and he also in his uh, yearly calendar, he uh, fills in slots when he's going to take that break. And I'm sure when he knows when he's taking that break, uh, he plans things much ahead. He foresees things that will come up during that time. So he works towards that and, you know, he finishes those things and he delegates responsibilities when he's going off on his vacation. And also maybe also plan things that would come after vacation, which he will have to cater to before he goes for that. So it's good to plan, like Jean said, and also uh, delegate responsibilities and uh, work uh, so that, uh, you know, work towards completing those tasks so that, you know, you can enjoy a good break and take that good break. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Sam, for your question. I hope that helped. Yes. Yes, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Jean. Thank you, Pastor Selena. Helps. Anyone else has any questions, doubts? Uh, okay, Pastor Selena, I'll just add a. Uh, I mean, Jean covered it all, so there's uh, nothing left out. But uh, an additional thought that I I, I was um, uh, thinking is important also is uh, as you know, Sam was sharing. Sometimes it feels impossible to take a break. Uh, and you know there's so much going on uh, but also one approach that really helps is to enjoy the work that we do uh, there's a whole lot happening and you know we're looking at a at, at a point in time where we can plan and take off uh, but even in everyday everyday responsibilities if we enjoy that they enjoy the tasks uh, it doesn't uh, that sense of feeling overwhelmed right at the end of the day you you've had fun doing what uh, was given to you. So that kind of an attitude also helps um, hopefully prevent burnout. So just uh, an added thought there. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Pastor Nancy. Anyone else has any questions, doubts, any clarifications? Um, I, just, a, just a thought. The Lord Jesus said, you know, um, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And also the fact that we are uh, designed to host uh, the spirit of God, you know, in our spirit, receive revelation, etc. But our flesh, uh, maybe our physical body and uh, also our rene unrenewed mind is unable to cope up with that. So, so is that one of the reasons is, or is that the main reason for burnout, uh, Jean? Uh, because our spirit is willing, we continue to receive, um, but then our, you know, our flesh is weak. In that sense. Um, yeah, so I think what you're saying, Pastor Jacobar, is is um, the the focus of the speed at which the spirit is in 
the, you know, the, the body and the, and the mind, you know, it takes a long time to actually catch up. And right. Uh, right. right, I think that's what, that's what you, you're mentioning. Um, and yes, I, um, so when we're looking at it as a spiritual sense, um, I, I did bring about a more, you know, work-life model. But I think when you're looking at it as a spiritual sense, yes, it is with the many things that the spirit puts in us to, to accomplish, to do, or, uh, you know, to see, like, for example, I mean, I, I remember a time when, um, you know, the spirit, with what I was doing, there was, there was so many, especially in counseling, there were so many people I had who I was talking to, um, you know, on, on a continuous basis. And it was the end of the day and uh, someone called up and, you know, was asking for support and help. And I was just physically and emotionally really, really drained. But then there was that nudge inside by the spirit to, to keep going on, to keep going on. And, uh, uh, I, well, I, I'm so thankful that, you know, I, I paid attention to that voice and continue to doing that because it ministered. It ministered to the person, even when maybe I was really drained. I, I just couldn't take it anymore. Just willing to do that, um, uh, you know, brought about some some help and for them. But yeah, when you're looking at it from maybe the person in question, like uh, as in the sense of when I was going through that, there were there was that battle at that point of time. Lord, I can't do this. It, it's just not happening. So I, I do agree. Yes, that could be points of time that, that we feel burnout. And that's when we need to be rejuvenated once again by going back to the spirit to really unload off. And I remember that evening I had to really go back and, you know, just offload everything that was that was steeped in my in my heart. Uh, you know, just take that time to just meditate on God's word so that, you know, I feel a sense of refreshing the next time. So they may be, these may be briefer moments of burnout rather than prolonged. When we look at burnout, we're looking at prolonged periods. But these, yes, I, I do see that they could be brief periods of burnout where, you know, we need to get back to that place of refreshing where we can start over again, maybe the next day. Right, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor Kumar, for your uh, question, and thank you, Jean. Uh, thank you, Sam, for uh, uh, your uh, input and also for uh, uh, your suggestion. I'm sure Pastor Nancy has made a note of it. Anyone else has any questions, doubts? Okay, Jean, I just like to ask you. Okay, Sam, go ahead, Sam. Yeah, uh, this is other Sam, but <laughs> Sam <laughs> Daniel Matthews. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, there's a question on um, uh, burnout. Is it is there any relation to personality types? So, for example, you know, everyone has different personalities, right? Like um, Type A, driven, lot of goals. Um, so, I just is, is there any relation to, or is it medically proven that there are certain kind of people that are, and, and what what should we do if there is any cor correlation to that? that? That's an excellent question, Sam. So when we look at, when we look at personality types, generally we classify it as three, type A, type B, type C. And the type C ones, uh, the class of people are those who are more anxious, more dependent, uh, more the ones who who probably um, uh, are, are fret over 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 even small menial tasks. We do see that burnout is a lot more um, seen in that category of individuals, where uh, you know the constant warriors, the constant the people who who are perfectionists, who want things to be done in a, in a certain way, the ones who are extremely organized. Um, that can happen. Uh, it, this perfection organized organized um, combination sometimes can be can be quite stressful because you want to do something in a particular way, yet you have a certain pattern and, and a and a rhythm of doing that. And that it is seen that burnout generally is affects more people in that category because one again is their sense of support 
maybe much lesser than the type A ones, the ones who are more robust, more open, more uh, extroverted, the ones who can actually talk about it and share and discuss what they're feeling about it. Uh, these, the type C ones are the more introverted, the more closed in. And uh, because they don't get the support or get, uh, uh, may not even really speak up when they are going through some kind of an exhaustion, that, that could be a reason why you'd see a lot more burnout in the type C kind of people. Thank you, uh, Jean George. Thank you, Sam Daniel, for your question. I hope it uh, has been answered. OK. Anyone else has any questions? Yeah, I, I just have a question following uh, Sam's question. So about personality types. Um, and also, you know, the, some being more prone to uh, uh, burnout. So in which case, um, you know, does the renewing of the mind and um, you know other spiritual disciplines uh, like have you seen anyone overcome that you know um, or you know someone cross over from a type c to a type b kind of personality because of the fact that they were exposed to the world they renewed their minds and and then they were um, you know uh, they were able to uh, I mean, kind of undergo a transformation in their even in their personality at the core of their personality um, so, and thereby facing burnouts in a more successful way. Yeah. So I just wanted to ask that. Gene. Yes. So, um, personalities basically don't change. Personalities kind of remain similar, but there is overcoming that takes place. So let's say someone who's probably extremely anxious and does take every task, um, that that's put on them. Um, with with a huge sense of burden, with a with the ability to renew their mind, you know, bringing it to the Lord, really really having a constant um, process of thought that's changed, that's altered, <clears throat> according to God's word, does not change their personality, but probably changes the way that they function, change the way that they that they work. Uh, and I think I'm an example of that. I was the type C, and I think I still am a type C. But with, with just uh, knowing what I'm called for, knowing what we have, what, what is there as part of uh, our faith, just that in itself has brought about freedom, maybe to relate to others, freedom to take on certain responsibilities and tasks that I probably would never do as just in that personality type. Um, so the personality doesn't change, but I, like I said, the overcoming happens. Uh, they don't move into type B or type A, but then because of their their uh, their beliefs, because of the narratives that they, the spiritual narratives that they build themselves with, they are able to be more free in responding to tasks or or, or uh, responsibilities that may not actually um, be native to them as part of their personality. I hope I answered that, Pastor Jack. Um, right, right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jean. Thank you, Pastor Jay Kumar, for your uh, question. Um, Priya Williams, uh, yes, uh, yeah, uh, Jean George had mentioned how to identify uh, when you're going through burnout. Uh, the, the link to uh, this mentoring hour will be posted uh, so you can listen to what she has shared uh, when you, after the session is over. Anyone else has any questions, doubts, queries you'd like to ask? Okay, Roshan, Pastor Roshan Joannis, how much of vision is related to burnout? Can having no vision also lead to burnout? Yeah, uh, I think I mentioned that in my, in that work, life model about values. It's spoken about values in that. When there isn't a vision, um, you you do not have an end goal or you don't have a horizon that you're looking at, you can be burnt out because um, you have not really charted out what you're expecting as an outcome from that vision, right? So when you do not have a vision, it's, e it's easier to be burn burnt out because you're just doing, picking up tasks from here and there, doing something, uh, having maybe menial results, 
but really not converging into something that is much more meaningful. Yes, so not having a vision, it can can ease, easily lead someone to burn out. Thank you, Pastor Roshan, and thank you, Jean. Anyone else? We just have five more minutes. I'll just have a quick question, Jean. Sorry, <laughs> I have uh, too many things to get today. Uh, but just wanted to know, like, how do you, how does one help uh, people who are, you know, maybe uh, elderly uh, and sick and so on, like, with, you know, with the hope and the vision, because if they are confined to one place and uh, nothing much to look forward to in terms of events or activities and so on. So uh, how does one help them to cope with, uh, you know, this burnout and symptoms of burnout? Mm. So um, I, I think in that, in that place, more than it being burnout, it, it probably is a place of uh, you know, coming, having coming to the end of life without an actual purpose to pursue, and so the the um, uh, the sense, the the weight of that of not feeling significant or feeling um, an ability to do something. I think that's what probably that is more than it being burnout. However, there are the symptoms could probably be most common, and I think among the elderly, one of the most important thing um, is connection community just having uh, people others uh, connecting to them uh, taking time to talk to them um, you know revisiting probably their years of influence their years of what they have done just helping that to take place um, because that's what they miss they miss connection they miss uh, a, a place where they could converge together to discuss about certain things so with the elderly it's it's that it's uh, encouragement it's, uh, it's being together just praying together listening to the word together i think that's the biggest thing for on how one can help the elderly and that's the topmost that i think comes to my mind and anyone else could probably I, a lot of I think a lot of our pastors have experienced dealing with elderly Pastor Jacob you to have and I'm sure you can bring some wealth in that question yourself. Yeah, I, I, I had this question. So <laughs> I was actually at uh, trying to figure out answers, you know, so that's why I asked and yeah, thanks. This helps. So uh, community conversation, connection. And uh, yeah, and of course, definitely. Uh, you know worship and prayer and so on sharing yeah i guess that uh, really helps thank you thank you pastor jay kumar and thank you jean uh jean i just had one question or uh, you know to you uh, you handle so many varied uh, roles and responsibilities and you do it so efficiently i admire you for that uh have you ever uh, faced burnout and how did you handle that <laughs> Yeah, uh, I think my burnout happened uh, when I was a young mother and having had to do a whole lot of other things. That was that was when I, I think I that was my significant time of burnout. And uh, it was just to uh, prioritize for me. It was just to go to God and say, what is my role right now? And I had a I had a download of priority of being a mother and said, OK, that's that's the biggest thing there. And uh, taking that focus on that and just taking a few things that I could manage. And that was, for me, I think it's just basically that, to help to prioritize what I need to do and really begin to say no. I think I've started doing that over the last couple of years where I refuse certain things um, which which I know that I won't be able to take. So just, just knowing that even if I say God does not uh, want me as as a burnt out minister, and I don't think Jesus wants me that way. He wants me as an active um, and vibrant uh, person. And to say no to some of this is perfectly okay. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Jean. Thank you, Jean George, so much for uh, sharing on burnout. And so, if uh, if any of you are feeling like burnout toasts this morning, she's just added that extra 
cheese, butter, jam, whatever you like, mayonnaise, you know, it just help us. So um, I hope it is uh, helpful for all of you this morning. Uh, thank you for joining the mentoring hour. This is our last mentoring hour for the semester. We'll see you uh, in the mentoring hour for the new semester. Uh, in the break, have a wonderful uh, break and a wonderful ministry time. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Jean George, very much. Thank you. Have a blessed day, everyone. Thank you. Yeah.